All right, guys. So what do I need to start a tea business? So welcome to the podcast. Um, I'm actually going to take this and upload this uh, podcast onto our YouTube channel. So here on Marketing Food Online, you guys will be able to uh, take advantage of the information as well. So we're going to dive into five, specifically five subscriber questions. I've got them pulled up here on my laptop from our Marketing Food Online YouTube channel. So I thought I would put that up on our podcast here. So if you're looking to get into tea business, I've got five great questions that cover, encompass some really important things you might want to think about if you haven't. And if you're looking to expand or scale your existing tea business, some of these questions might be things that you may or may not have actually th heard of or thought about. So let's not waste any time. Let's dive into these five subscriber questions. Number one, it comes from Chris C. Um, I you know, normally don't actually uh, pronounce the last names uh, just for purposes of I don't want to give out someone's last name. But the first name is Chris C. Um, what are the costs associated, Damien, with starting a tea business, such as equipment or supplies, licenses, and fees? So now this is a great question because this is, it's kind of it's difficult to figure out what you might need to get started. Of course, first and foremost, you definitely want to know uh, what specifically as far as licenses and permits and things that you'll need. That's going to be dependent upon where you are going to start your or your tea business. And what I mean by that is that most tea businesses, believe it or not, you can actually start selling tea, tea leaves specifically, by the way. Let me clarify this. Most uh, home-based food businesses are not allowed to sell beverages uh, such as made tea. Actually, if you brew tea or you steep it, or you're looking to serve it in a cup or you want to bottle it. Normally, that's not allowed under cottage food laws or any laws that um, basically dictate home-based food businesses. So if you're starting from home, that's going to be a different way than actually starting a commercial facility or commercial kitchen. So you definitely want to look at the licensing and fees specifically in your city or county. That's very, very important because under cottage food laws, many uh, local municipalities don't have the abilities to override the state's laws in regards to um, uh, selling food from home or even starting a home-based tea business of any kind. So if you're looking to sell just tea itself, tea leaves, uh, double check to make sure you have any licenses or permits that might be actually needed, depending upon where you're getting started. You also want to check out if you're going to go directly into a facility, a commercial facility, rent or utilities. That's something you need to think about too. And think of the amount of money you're going to put out front before you begin to actually sell this in bulk and such. The great thing about starting from home is that you don't have to invest a lot of money to test the waters, as you will, to kind of see how that tea business might go. I highly recommend you would do that before you rent or sign a, a year, five or six year lease or 10 year lease to some facility without having proof of the concept just yet. I talk about that a lot here on my uh, YouTube channel. So you definitely want to look into that too, as far as uh, the rent and utilities, if you're looking to get out into a commercial facility, if it's really going to be beneficial for you to do that. Um, I personally would recommend starting small, kind of get local feedback, get some um, sales under your belt in a sense, get your product out there locally and do it on a very small scale as opposed to taking a big leap. A lot of times I get a lot of clients through our consulting um, who have tried a product or tested a product with friends or family. And that's always a great thing to do. The only drawback to that realistically is that you get a lot of positive feedback no matter if somebody likes it or not. And that's not really what you want. You want honest, true feedback. If someone thinks it's horrible or tastes whatever, you know, just let them know. And you, you're looking for people to give you good and bad feedback, not always give you a big thumbs up and pat you on the back because that's not a true test of actually whether the product is good. Friends or family are always a good place to start. But in my opinion, going to farmer's market or going to a tea festival or going to somewhere where there's a, a food and wine or beverage festival or something like that, an event where you can, you can set up a booth and try your tea out, always a better way to go. Now, the other thing you want to think of is the equipment. So the type of equipment that you will need specifically for a tea business is going to be dependent on a few things. And here's, here are those things that you need to understand. The way that you're packaging the tea, are you looking to create tea bags that allow people to steep the tea already in a small quantity that's ready to go? Are you looking to sell whole leaf tea that's in a larger bag that someone can simply take the tea out, put it into a steeping pot of some kind and make tea that way? It's really going to be dependent upon the type of way you want to present the tea itself. That's going to be very big and very dependent upon the type of equipment that you're going to need to get started. Again, what I would recommend is not investing thousands upon thousands of dollars into very expensive uh, tea bagging equipment that would actually help you bag them individually um, and then have the little uh, string on the end of it where you're actually going to steep it in a tea bag or those pyramids. Those are can be and those are really costly up front. Doing whole leaf tea is always a great way to go because you can buy it in 10, 12, 14 pounds, believe it or not, big, big. Uh, bags, you can break it down into individual units, try it out, or you can blend your own and, and such. So that way you don't invest a lot of money in those big pieces of machinery to mass produce something that you don't have proof of yet. The other thing you think about is insurance. 
one thing when you start the tea business from scratch, you're starting most likely from home, as I mentioned, your homeowner's policy and does not cover any type of food business that you are operating within the home itself. Normally they don't, not that I'm aware of. You'll have to have an insurance policy for your tea business. Specifically, if you do that, no, you're going to need to have also a business license and maybe even an LLC, which I definitely recommend because you want to separate the liability from your personal liability and your actual business liability. So doing that will also give you a little bit of support and, of course, allow you to keep all the products and keep everything that you've got going without having to worry about any personal ramifications if someone sues the business or sues it because they get sick or have some allergic reaction. So the second question, how can I source high quality tea leaves or blends at a competitive price? That is a really good question, especially today in 2023. Uh, that is from Janice H. Janice H. Janice, thank you so much for asking that. So how do you source high quality tea leaves? Really, to be honest with you, that's going to take some research on your end. You're going to have to do a little bit of homework. Go online and Google it and try to find somebody who has the quality teas that you're looking for. But again, quality is going to be dependent upon what you think is, is the high quality. There's a lot of American-based and U.S.-based companies that resell bulk tea that they get from a lot of times, most of it's from Asian countries, Asia, uh, a lot of it's from China, a lot of it's from uh, the Orient and such in, in Asian countries where the bulk of those teas are actually grown. Um, not, of course, every single tea is there, but a lot of it is. The most of the world's tea is actually grown in that region. But getting it from there, a lot of U.S. companies bring it over in huge amounts. So we're talking thousands and thousands of pounds, and that is a lot of tea when you start breaking it down. So... Finding a good source for high quality teas, I personally would try to do it within the U.S. because when you get some uh, get a source from outside the U.S., your minimums are going to be pretty high. You might have to be end up going through uh, when you bring it through the port. You're going to end up having probably potentially having taxes on it. There might be other duties or other fees that you may have to pay as well. There's a lot of other factors when you want to be bringing it in in the bulk and in a really large quantity. Find an existing company here in the U.S. that has teas. You can also get samples. You can actually break them down and get samples from those tea companies, which is always a great idea. That way you can see and kind of test what you may think is a good quality. It's kind of difficult to say what's a high quality and what's not based on taste preferences. So if you're looking for a high quality tea leaf and you want to get competitive pricing, you're going to need to compare a lot of different companies. I would probably go with about five, six, maybe seven different companies here in the U.S. And then remember, you've got to compare tea to tea. If you have green teas, green teas, black teas to black teas. Um, White tea, even they have white tea or red red teas and red tea leaves. Uh, there's a lot of oolongs. There is uh, matchas. There is uh, green. There is, of course, a black. But depending upon the type of leaf that it is, make sure you're comparing the two, not something that's different and different uh, as far as the price point, too. So number three, so what are the regulations and compliance requirements for selling tea, both online and in physical retail stores? That is a great question. That is from J John Johnson. T. Johnson. Okay. T. Johnson. Um, so that's a great question. In regards to a retail storefront, you're basically going to go through the whole process of traditional uh, licensing, permitting, making sure that you're in a business zoned uh, facility as well, a commercially licensed facility. Uh, you also would need insurance for that as well. So if you're looking to get into the tea business, um, it's a lot simpler and a lot easier. Uh, I personally would say to be online through the e-commerce world. Uh, but when you get into a brick and mortar or a retail location, you're probably most likely also going to have a health department inspections or potentially the Department of Agriculture will inspect you um, either annually or every six months. So there's a lot that goes into a retail storefront if you're looking to sell teas. The other thing that you think about is that you can reach a lot more customers if you're actually on e-commerce as opposed to brick and mortar because of the fact that you're in a lot of different places. If you have stores, uh, e-commerce stores online through Amazon, eBay, and Etsy, those are a lot of different places that have hundreds of millions. I've talked about it all the time here on my channel. You can reach millions of customers potentially with your tea business. The bad thing about the brick and mortar is that you're limiting yourself to foot traffic coming into that specific location to buy tea. Now, is a very popular. You got to also kind of do some demographic research in your area to find out does it make sense to open it in my neighborhood in the city or county that I'm in? Are there a lot of tea drinkers? Maybe there is. Maybe there's not. If you open a tea shop and it looks amazing, it's beautiful, and you've got high quality teas, but no one in that area really drinks a lot of tea, then you've wasted a lot of money in a retail storefront. So as far as the regulations, you're going to make sure that you also are abiding by any FDA regulations in regards to labeling the specific tea, also making any health claims and such. You want to be very, very cautious about that. Double check the FDA website for specifics on how that breaks down for labeling uh, herbal teas and tea blends and teas in general. Definitely want to do that. Also. So the other thing to think about is when you are online, you're on e-commerce, you may have to, within the city or county that you have, specify that on your business license, okay? 
or have a specific area. Normally, I can speak from this from my own experience. When we went online as opposed to our brick and mortar bakery, then we transitioned to e-commerce. The actual la the fill when we filled out the business license, there's a special area that we had to designate that we were e-commerce or electric, like they call it electronic commerce um, business. So that may be something that you'll have to get as well within the city or county. Spe specifically check with them on that. And of course, you're going to need, again, insurance, just like any other business. If you're in e-commerce and you're selling your tea, or you're selling your uh, tea products um, online throughout the, your own state, but other states through interstate commerce, make sure that you have the right insurance policy. Make sure you're also collecting the appropriate sales tax too. Um, so there's a lot of pros and cons to both, but I personally would probably never open a brick and mortar tea business today because it's just so much easier to reach so many customers uh, when it comes to e-commerce. So let's get into the next question and I believe it's going to be our final question. Let me ask real quick. We take a look at what we've got. All right, so yeah. Um, so are there any industry associations or resources that can provide support and guidance for tea business? As a matter of fact, yes, that is actually a great question. Uh, there are a handful of organizations, uh, food and beverage organizations that are dedicated to bringing together and kind of uh, networking with a lot of other tea developers, tea growers, importers of tea and tea businesses, et cetera. So yes, you definitely want to check. There's actually the, uh, I believe it's called Specialty Tea Institute, STI, Specialty Tea Institute. Um, they are a division of the Tea Association of USA. There's also a handful of other ones um, that I checked into, the World Tea Council and the World Tea Academy, uh, which is kind of interesting. Um, that is something that you might want to look into if you're looking for an organization that you can kind of pair up with and meet other people um, and find out from their own experience or other resources on their websites. Those are some great ones you want to definitely keep in mind. So all in all, if you're looking to create a tea business, those are some great questions from our subscribers. I want to make sure that you guys um, actually have one more. Let me see. That is the fourth one. There it is. Last one. How can I effectively actually market and promote my tea business to attract customers? As always, one of the most effective ways that has always been around for at least 10, 15, 20 years, social media is always the way to go. Now, one thing I will, I will tell you about uh, the food industry and the food, food business in general, and it even overlaps to the tea business, you want to find out what two specific social media platforms work really well for you and kind of double down on those specifically if you're looking to promote or market your tea business. The reason why I say that is for us, we have presence, of course, on all social media platforms with all the businesses that we have, but they don't always work well with the specific product or service that we have. Marketing Food Online, for instance, our YouTube channel here, does really well when I, when I promote it on actually on LinkedIn and I believe Facebook because we have a lot of groups, closed Facebook groups. Those two together really work really well for Marketing Food Online. Now my candy and snack business, um, Instagram and Facebook are much better paired up for that. So you wanna double check and see what really works well, what pans out good for your tea business and focus on two specifically and kind of double down on that as far as building content, video content, short video content, um, either uh, short blogs or articles that you could put out. LinkedIn is also a really great place, even if you have a tea business, there's a lot of people on LinkedIn that are associated in the beverage industry, that are in the tea business, coffee business, uh, food business in general, food buyers, CEOs of companies, um, food brokers that could potentially help launch your tea business into a, a whole nother uh, stratosphere if you had a food broker working with you. There's a lot of ways to connect with people on LinkedIn, and that's always a good thing. Even if you're selling tea, coffee, or donuts, it doesn't matter what you're doing, um, that's always a great place to be. For us, Facebook and LinkedIn for Marketing Food Online has been really, really beneficial. So that's my tips and pointers. If you're looking to create a tea business, I would definitely look into doing some of these. If you've got any feedback, let us know down below in the comments section. If you've already launched a tea business and it's doing really well and successful, let us know in the comments. Um, if you're looking to start one, let us know some of the hurdles, some of the things that you're still challenged with, and we can build some content out here to help you out. I'll see you guys on our next video.